Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. The purpose of our organization is sustainable civilization building. We're doing this through open source and free shared blueprints, tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions to create complete, self-sufficient, and self-sustainable teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. The purpose of these communities, villages, and cities is to demonstrate solutions to the foundations of everything that is currently challenging society right now. The basics of this are food, energy, housing, education, true earth stewardship, highest good for-profit, non-profit business models, as well as a social and recreation model that will improve a standard of living and an experience of living that most people will consider to be far superior to what they're experiencing right now. And the reason why we're doing all of this is to demonstrate that a working model can be implemented right now and to show that it provides a way of living that most people will consider better than what they're doing right now so that it will become self-replicating. Our goal is to make it easy enough, affordable enough, and attractive enough to get the mainstream public interested and to create a true global paradigm shift in the way that people look at the living experience, look at their education experience, look at their for-profit, non-profit business experience, look at food, look at housing, all of these things simultaneously addressed because we see them all as inseparable, as not just interconnected, but inseparable. And we see addressing them all simultaneously as the only true solution. Everything else we see as, as putting a bandage on the problem. If we're really, really going to address crime, if we're really, really going to address poverty, if we're really, really going to address education, if we're really, really going to address the food quality and health standards within this country, within this, on this planet, if we're really, really going to address social inequality and injustice, a comprehensive model is necessary. And so we are bringing together as a nonprofit, as a group of 100% volunteers, unpaid volunteers, the people that believe that this is not only possible, but now is the time to create it. And the people that want to put in the time and the energy to create something that will be truly transformational and historic in its reach and in its impact for the global population. Starting by dramatically impacting the people that are involved in this project right now, expanding the local community and reaching out and helping teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world to bring the resources to the places where they're needed most, but not just the resources, a consciousness for the highest good of all, a global collaborative, a global cooperative of people working together to come up with solutions, lasting, sustainable solutions to all of the world's current problems to provide the resources that people need so that we can stop living from a place of scarcity and start living from a place of abundance where people have what they need to take care of themselves and their families and their friends so that they can then help take care of their communities, take care of their countries, take care of the global population, and to really make a difference in the lives of everybody by starting by making a difference in their life and themselves and their closest friends, but sharing what it is that they create with everybody around them. And so our goal is to create the specific blueprints, tools, tutorials, and resources to create that. And so this is our weekly update blog, our Sustainable Civilization Building Update Blog number 39, covering our weekly progress uh, or our progress for the week of November 18th, 2013. Format of these blogs is always the same. I'm going to go through a bullet point list real quick of everything that we've accomplished within the last week. And then I will go through and talk in detail about all of those different things, what we've accomplished and the specifics on those and, uh, and what's coming in the future and reference a whole bunch of stuff on the website. Because as we said, we're creating open source tools, tutorials, and resources. So the place to find all of that information is on the onecommunityglobal.org website. And so if you want to check out all the details, we've got thousands, tens of thousands of hours of work into it, creating uh, open source tools, tutorials, and resources. See all that stuff on our website. And there's always a written blog that goes along with this video blog, which you can also see on our website if you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog. Or if you click in the YouTube description, it's always the first link in the YouTube description is the link to the written blog that has all of the images, 
that are related to this, the exports, and then links to all the pages on our website that go into massive detail and everything that we're creating. Since it is uh, do-it-yourself instruction manuals that we're putting together, you will see that our website is huge and has uh, very comprehensive details on where you can buy materials, where you can, uh, the specifics of uh, building plans and things like that as we're developing them. They're all going up on the website and as we build one community and actually create a place that people can visit, that people can come to and experience everything that we are creating and take the tools, tutorials, and resources and blueprints to duplicate it. As we build the actual physical location, everything that we're doing will multiply a hundredfold as we put out uh, multimedia tutorials and, and additional layers as we're doing everything hands-on and, uh, and building it all. So time-lapse photography, that kind of stuff. So with that said, let me jump into update number 39. Uh, this last week in education, we are now 50% done with the lesson plan page and template. Uh, the template is the actual image and the lesson plan page is the first of 35 lesson plans. So we're going to create the first six months of lessons to be taught in the education program on the property, open source and free shared education model that can be applied in a traditional environment, can be applied in a homeschooling environment, or can be applied in any community-based uh, schooling environment, which could be an urban community, it could be a teacher demonstration, village or city like what we're designing or it could be something completely different. So we're 50% done with the lesson plan page and template. Uh, we've also finished in the last week the law and anthropology uh, poly, anthropology research uh, is done which finishes the social sciences research that we've been doing for the last few weeks and we are 40% done with the actual math um, visual representation of the complete subject of math that will plug into our lesson plans. Uh, in food infrastructure, we are we have now version, I would say roughly, that's probably version 5.0 is done in CAD of our food infrastructure, our complete food infrastructure. And so we'll, we've got images of that posted on the blog, on the written blog. You can check that out. You can see cross sections now of the food infrastructure. The Aquapini food infrastructure has now been put up there. And engineering has begun. So the CAD work is thanks to the great work of David Sweet and Zdenek has started working with us on the engineering details. So along with that, we continue to research plastic, and um, we've got a new roof design that's coming here within, hopefully within the next couple weeks. We have now talked to um, a broad diversity of people, everywhere from universities to plastic providers to um, greenhouse manufacturers and supply providers. I think we've talked to probably 20 or 30 different experts within different fields and gotten their opinions on that and so plastic research continues and we're starting to come down to the final designs for the roof which is very 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 exciting. Um, also in uh, in the food department we are now moving forward with our aquaculture research. We've researched in the last week providers um, and all the details, happy critter details that are necessary and I'll talk more about that when I come back around. Uh, additionally in the food department we have updated our rabbits and chickens pages, raising rabbits and chickens for food, uh, and we've updated those pages to clearly reflect our intent with respect to our vegan members and vegan people uh, just in the population at large and to uh, show the, uh, our ethical strategy for raising rabbits and chickens for food. Also in the last week, uh, we've now got our first 15 food force plants are up on the website. And so uh, we said that we've been working on the final edits over off the website, and so now we're finally starting to transport those over onto the website. So you can see those on the Food Force page, and um, that completes food. For food inf or for housing infrastructure, Earthbag Village, we are now finishing up landscaping on the Earthbag Village in 3D, uh, which is a process of learning how to do landscaping in SketchUp, um, and our partner. Uh, Devin Porter is also beginning to work on Tropical Atrium hands, which I'll talk about what that is in a second. But uh, the hands are now going in 3D, and we have exports for the Earthbag Village 3D images exports, and we also have um, Tropical Atrium hand exports that we can show you the beginnings of those starting to happen in 3D, so you can see what that is on the written blog. Um, and then we have an update on the Sago Center every week. We've been making huge progress in Sago Center uh, duplicable and sustainable city center um, hub 
And so 3D updates on that, we have added in uh, tables and chairs, and we've got lots of image exports for that, as well as stair stringers and railings are all added in 3D into the SketchUp file. And so all that stuff is moving forward too. So that's what we've accomplished in the last week. Let me talk a little bit more about it in depth and share uh, some of the specifics on this stuff because um, it's pretty exciting. Every week is a step forward and lots of progress. So starting with education, I mentioned that we're 50% done with the lesson plan page and template. Um, the education program is a multi-step or a multi-componented program that's designed, as I said, to be implemented in either a traditional schooling environment, it could be applied in a homeschooling environment, and as we establish it and actually become licensed as an education uh, provider, we will open source that as well so that people can set up community-based education programs either in urban environments or rural environments or so that you could just establish a community-based education program anywhere in the world that has internet access using the tools, tutorials, and resources that we're putting together. And so to create this, we have studied uh, all of the alternative education methods that are out there. We've looked at Waldorf, we've looked at Regio, we've looked at ORF, we've looked at Aid Intelligences, we have looked at Study Tech, we have looked at Montessori, um, we have looked at Bloom's Taxonomy, we've looked at all of these. We've looked at the best strategies of great teachers, leaders, and communicators, and we've put all this information, this research together to create the different components of the Education for Life program. And the Education for Life program is meant to be, uh, in its ultimate expression, implemented and demonstrated within the teacher demonstration community, village, and city model in that the entire community, village, or city is a learning environment that is learning for life. So for preschool all the way to post-college and advanced studies, everything provided with this, within this environment to uh, teach people and to apply the advanced skills necessary to create sustainable civilizations. Everything from addressing the societal aspects to addressing the infrastructure aspects, taking the knowledge and information that is currently available, that is now available through the internet and through the ability to reach out to people all around the world and ask the experts on what is working, where it's working, and how to implement that, and put it all together in one place in such a way that people can come and visit and experience it and learn it, or people that are living there can create a complete lifestyle out of sharing this and teaching others how to create self-propagating solutions to not just fish, but to teach people how to fish. And the idea, and in the metaphor of fishing, uh, to teach people how to live for the highest good of all and how to apply solution-based thinking in a comprehensive manner that addresses everything that is currently going on in our society to bring together people that want to live their lives and produce solutions for the rest of the world and be a part of the global collaborative or just want to apply an education model that is more hands-on, gives them more time with their kids and provides a better education than most traditional models. So in this last week we have um, we finished, we're 50 percent done with the lesson plan page and template which is the first lesson plan and template of some 30 plus that we've designed. And so what we did in last week is we start putting together the mind map, which is a visual representation of how you can teach this lesson within a central concept. And this first one is the concept of time. And then within the context of time, teach art and music. And within the context of time, to teach English. And within the context of time, to teach math. And within the context of time, to teach science and social sciences all these different things all within the context of time so that it's interesting, it's engaging, and so that we have a lesson plan that is applicable to any age student and any and a student at any educational level. So a student could be an advanced student and they could plug into this education model. They could be a student that might be challenged in one area but advanced in another and they could plug into the area where they're challenged over here and advanced over here so that we have actual education programs that are individualized and a model that can be applied to everything from adult education to preschool education within the context of time. And they're fascinating. So uh, check it out. Take a look at what it is that we're doing. And along with that, in the last week, we finished our law and anthropology research. And so law and anthropology were the last two components that we needed to finish our social studies uh, subject research. 
So if you take the subject of social studies, everything that's in there, psychology, um, uh, law, anthropology, all of your different social studies elements, uh, cultural studies, all these different things, we put foreign languages in there as well, all of these things go into one comprehensive model of what the subject looks like. And if you understood the whole subject, then you could be somebody that would be considered thoroughly versed in everything that would be necessary to go into advanced placement within a college environment in social sciences. And so we've set this up so that we can identify what that is and then also address what you would see within a college environment as well and the outer reaches of that. So we're not limiting students to only what most traditional schools are teaching up through high school. We want students that, that really achieve and that really take to the information to be able to go into advanced social science and studies. And so we've completed all the research now for that complete body of knowledge, just like we did for math. And so with that, We've now, we've now finished that and we're starting to do the image research so we can put that together in one visual image that will represent all of that research. And then down below will be everything that would be taught so that a student could be prepared for the SATs and ACTs or be prepared to take advanced placement uh, testing into a college environment or as a college graduate that could come and take and look at this and say, okay, well these are the areas within this teacher demonstration model where I could really excel on like a self-governing process or uh, learning, the, uh, learning about how to establish uh, infrastructure in different cultures and things like that, which are found big foundations of what our organization is all about, creating self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities. So all that stuff is done. Now we're doing image research, which means we've got to go research all the different images that create this. We call it a social studies molecule, which is a big circular representation of the entire um, knowledge body of social sciences and social studies and putting images in there that represent that and then those images will be represented by the information down below so that we have a real easy visual representation where anywhere anybody anywhere in the world can access this through a computer or a tablet and have all that information at their fingertips and be able to scroll through that and click and access complete lesson plans and details so I mentioned that we're 50 percent done with the lesson plan that's what the lesson plans are and they tie together with all of these subject outlines so that a student would have a portfolio where they would see exactly where they are in social sciences, exactly where they are in math, exactly where they are in English, exactly where they are in uh, art and music, and they can, they can help to, to become a proactive part of their own education so that the areas that they really take to, they can soar in those areas. and the areas where they need more help, they can see where that is, and you can use a more hands-on collaborative environment to address that to bring those students up to speed. And so um, it's pretty exciting to have the first lesson plan starting to be outlined. And you can see a picture of that on the written blog. And you can uh, visit the actual page as it's under construction and see the first half of that's done and, uh, and take a look at how that's all developing. Along with that, I said that we're 40% done with the what we call the math molecule, which is really the complete subject of math. And so when I say 40% done, that means we've got all the images 40% of the images in, we got 40% of the descriptions done down below, and um, we should be able to put that up on the website here, hopefully within the next week or so. So we're working to finish that up. Coming along. Uh, and food infrastructure, I said that we're done with food infrastructure. 5.0 is now done in CAD. And so this is the great work of David Sweet is doing that work. And um, 5.0, it went through, I'm saying it went through about five different iterations over the last year and a half to get to where it is. And so we're now starting to put that into CAD and moving in the direction of complete building plans for the Aquapini and Wallapini food infrastructure. And so I talked about how uh, what we're doing is we want to positively influence the complete concept of food. We want to positively influence the complete concept of society so that people start thinking about living for the highest good of all and what's possible with that and creating an environment where people want to do that because their needs are being met. Well, in the food department, we're creating food infrastructure that provides food that is far superior to what people can buy in the grocery stores, not just because it's more nutritious or it's locally grown, although that's obviously the case, but because it's more diverse than what you can get in the grocery store. And not just diverse in that it's, you know, 50 kinds of apples instead of three kinds of apples, but more diverse because it's foods from around the world that are grown in these contained environments and provided uh, with, with complete... Um, recipes and preparation guidelines and how to take care of the plants 
all these details are coming along. And so to see our food infrastructure finally going into CAD and to see the actual building plans starting to come together for um, these structures is very, very exciting. And so we've got an image of that posted on the blog. You can check that out. On the written blog, you can see exactly what that looks like with a cross-section of large-scale aquapini now that's going in there and everything that we've had drawings up, architectural drawings up on the, on the website for many, many, many months now. It is now starting to evolve into CAD, and you can see those details there. So along with that, I mentioned that our plastic research continues. So um, our plastic research process has spanned a couple months. We have talked to uh, at least a couple different universities. We've talked to man, at least 10, maybe 20, well, 10 plastic providers and materials providers, and uh, maybe up to 10 also. Um, greenhouse uh, designers and providers and just working out the details of exactly what is going to be the most sustainable and intelligent roofing system on these structures that are designed to be built anywhere in the world and capable of providing a tropical growing environment if that's what people want although uh, want although we're going to demonstrate six different growing environments so people will be able to choose what it is that they want and to, and then all the details necessary to grow all the foods that people can't buy in the grocery store. So we start promoting biodiversity as part of our open source botanical garden model so that we start teaching people how to be true stewards so we start regenerating the foods of this planet rather than losing the diversity of this planet. So we can put that power back in the hands of people, create opportunities for revenue streams for them as well through, through farmers markets and ultimately influence the complete food industry by getting enough people interested that grocery stores say, hey, we want to provide more diversity because people are interested in it. And here's somebody that's providing that so we can buy that so that we can expand our options because we have locally grown food that's available to us in a volume that, that is sufficient to provide for our customers and we have customers that want this stuff. And so let's change the way we do business. Let's adapt. And so we really want to influence that. And so... Um, that's what we're doing. So plastic update, the plastic research that we've done, we continue talking to more. and We've got a, a new expert on hand that we're talking to um, that has wallapinis and aquapinis that, or wallapinis that have been built successfully in, in Alaska. And so now we're working on talking to the people in Alaska about what it is that we're doing and then looking at how we can adapt those designs to a permitted format. So non-permitted designs are pretty easy. Permitted designs are a totally different situation, and we see permitted designs as the safest, they're going to last the longest, and as most in support of our highest good of all philosophy, and so that's exactly what we're looking at is, okay, what do we need to do to get permitting and to adapt those models in such a way that they'll be able to be built pretty much anywhere and provide all the amazing benefits that we just talked about. Along with that, Inside our aquaponics, we obviously have aquaculture. And so we are, along with researching all the plastic, we have another member of our team that is researching all the providers and all of the necessary details for happy critters. We call it happy critters because we're looking at catfish, we're looking at crawfish or freshwater lobsters, and then we're also looking at freshwater mussels. And so we've run this by Avery Ellis, and we've got another uh, consultant that's not listed on the website, Greg Schwartz who's helping us and uh, he's an aquaponics expert and Avery is our, our, sorry, he's an aquaculture expert and Avery is our aquaponics expert and so we run these details by them and now we're doing the research into where do you purchase everything that you want and what exactly is going to be the size of pump that we need and how many, what is the stocking density that we can do in there that will create the healthiest environment, the happiest environment for these creatures instead of an environment that's overstocked and uh, is really just um, not not conducive to the healthiest creatures and so we're doing all that research and we started all that last week we've got a lot done and um, now we're moving into phase two of that so additionally in this last week I said we updated our rabbits and chickens pages um, to clearly reflect the intent uh, and and to respect our vegan members and so we've got vegan members on the team and um, and so how do you how do you create an environment that um, that works for vegan members who don't eat any meat or any animal products and, um, and is ethically raising creatures and, and clearly describing how, how it is that we're going we're gonna to demonstrate to the world highest good food 
that, that is um, flexible and respectful of diverse nutritional desires and needs. And so we've updated our rabbits and our chickens pages to reflect that. And you can go and take a look at those pages on the website now. You can link to them from our blog. Uh, or you just go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash rabbits, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash chickens, and you can check that out. We'll be adding those details also for goats, and um, we'll be creating an aquaculture page as well. So, But the rabbits and the chickens pages have been updated to really, really clearly state our intent and how we will be raising animals for food and um, how we're doing that in such a way that it works for our vegan members and to demonstrate really highest good food to the best of our ability. So, uh, also, uh, last but not least in the food department, we have started moving all of our food forest um, plants over onto the food forest page. So, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash food dash forest. And you can see all of these things. And, uh, and we've, we've moved over 15 plants now. And so, the food forest will be part of our open source botanical garden, global.org forward slash botanical garden. And um, you can see what that is, as well as all of our food infrastructure is a part of our open source botanical garden model. And so it's exciting for us to start moving those plants over and to see that we now have 15, our first 15 of 300 plants uh, that are part of our initial food forest design and plan. And so the first 15 are now up on the website and you can see the other 300 are all there, as well as the research that we did on over mm, almost 90 different providers to provide all those plants where you could purchase everything that's listed on the food forest page just like we have all the purchasing details up on the large-scale aquapini and the wallapini page and our other food infrastructure page so big movement there um, in housing earthbag village now is moving forward we're doing uh, finishing up the landscaping for the central area there just some final landscaping details We've got some images of that work in progress we've still got some more details that need to be added uh, it's a little slow in going because we have to teach ourselves how to do the landscaping details in um, in SketchUp, and so adding in the landscaping additional details that we're doing, we're, we're learning that process and adding that in. So, but it should be done within this week, I expect, and you can see some images of the process where it is right now, already up on the website. And then also, uh, thanks to the great work of Devin Porter, we are now starting to work on the tropical atrium hands, and what the tropical atrium hands are are um, terraced structures that are built within the tropical atrium to provide maximum growing space in an artistic way within that structure that will provide a tropical growing environment. And so the reason for the hands are because that environment will take years, a couple years, to really develop into, you know, many years for the trees and stuff that will grow in that environment to develop into the really beautiful recreational and food production space that it's meant to be. And so with the hand production, they serve a dual purpose. Number one, they create an artistic and beautiful space, well, triple purpose or quadruple purpose. Number one, they create a really um, artistic and beautiful recreational space while all that stuff is growing. Number two, they're going to house the piping from the, uh, from the showers that are adjacent to that structure and the hot water from those showers will circulate through those hands and provide additional heat into the tropical atrium and so they provide housing for that. Um, number three, they provide terrace growing space which we had to put terraces in there anyway because we created a 30 degree slope of the, of the entire south wall so that maximum sunlight will come in and reach the back wall versus having something that's like a tube in the ground that's not going to work and so that sloping those terraced hands creates all of that. And so, and they also create um, a, a really uh, beautiful environment that if somebody wanted to build and design something like this as an outdoor space and duplicate our models, we're going to show people how to build that structure without the structure. If you just wanted to create the container that was in that, if you wanted to build the hands, you wanted to build kind of a, an, a downset place with a fire pit and a growing space that would be semi-protected, you could build it without the roof and the right environment. And, and these hand structures that we're going to build will be really... Uh, something beautiful to see and so we're starting to put those into 3d which we already tried to put them into 3d about two or three months ago we really put a lot of work into this and we just kind of hit a dead end because it was beyond the capability of the person that was helping us to do that and so now Devin Porter has the skill and the ability to do this and he's taking it on and it's already turning out really really beautifully and so we've got the initial pictures of that 
up on the website. You can check it out in the blog and you can see what's happening. And so now that the basic structures of those hands are in, we're going to start rotating them, looking at the actual um, planting guidelines and what's going to be planted on those because all those details are up on the website and open source already. Looking at those details and saying, okay, what's going to be planted on these? How do they need to be positioned? How's it going to look? And adding that all into 3D so we can see it, so we can see what it actually looks like. So, God, super exciting to see that coming along. And um, great work, I mean, just amazing work by Devin Porter on that. So additionally, uh, we have Sago Center Duplicable and Sustainable City Center updates for you. Um, Carl Harris, working with our team, has done some great work in adding in the stair stringers, so stair details as well as stair railings, which is, um, is a big deal in SketchUp. It's really challenging to put those kinds of things because they're angled. And so we've got the basics of that in, and we're putting the finals in on that. And then we've also added in all the tables and chairs into the dining dome so you can actually see how it's going to seat 150 people. And so um, that was a big step because it required some custom designing of tables as well as custom designing of chairs. Sounds like a little thing. It's a big thing. It took tons of time. And um, the end result is absolutely beautiful. And so this is what we've accomplished in the last week as we are working towards sustainable civilization building. And um, I just want to say, because right now in the United States, you know, we're coming up on Thanksgiving and we have so many things to be thankful for. And um, in the U.S., we have something called Black Friday, where people camp out in front of stores to get great deals. And there's sometimes uh, practically riots to get their hands on some great deal. And when we talk about creating sustainable civilizations and the solution to everything and highest good for all, I like to ask myself, what would be necessary to create a world where that wasn't necessary? What would be necessary to create a world where instead of trampling each other for different goods that we want and a consumer-based society that is buying a lot of things that we might not necessarily need, what would be necessary instead to change the focus on creating products that last as long as possible? Creating environments where instead of pro products that are broken being thrown away, that they're repurposed and that they're fixed. And creating environments that support these products that will last forever because they're made with high quality labor, because they're made with high quality parts and um, the people that are making these things are being paid wages that can support their families so that they can buy a blender that will last, that has a lifetime guarantee too. And so that they're and living in environments where their kids are getting a higher level of education and they're being able to spend more time with their children because they don't have to work two or three jobs. And in environments where crime is much lower or virtually non-existent because everybody is provided for in environments where there aren't people starving on the streets in environments where everybody has access to power and clean healthy water and air and in environments where highest good for all businesses for-profit and non-profit businesses are being launched not just to make money but businesses that are being launched specifically in ways that help society, that contribute more that they, than they take, with a philosophy and a mindset that if you're going to build something, you should build it good. If you're going to build something, you're going to sell something, you should sell something that provides serious value, and you should be paid in a way that, that is fair uh, and, and um, representative of the time and energy that went into creating something of value. And taking that model and spreading it to places all over the world so that people that have very little have an engine to create abundance for themselves as well. You know, the idea of fair trade times 10. When teaching more and more people how to do this in a way that supports our economy and supports continued growth, but continued growth in a way that's sustainable sustainable because it can continue to grow to support the population as the population of this planet continues to grow in a way that's not going to exhaust our resources, that's not going to overflow our landfills, that's not poisoning our water, that's not poisoning our air. 
This is what we're talking about with sustainable civilization building. And we have the opportunity right now. It's happening right now. We've been working on it. I've been working on it full time for three years. We have a team of all volunteer, nonprofit volunteers that are just donating their time to create this because we know it's the right thing to do. And because we're creating it in a way that works for everybody, that truly is in the highest good of all of humanity. Nobody loses in this game. It doesn't have to be designed so that anybody loses. It's designed so that everybody wins. We're putting competition aside and we're focusing on cooperation and collaboration and we're saying, what can we create with that? What can we do so that every decision that we make, every thought that we, that we put out there, every creation that we demonstrate and we open source and we free share is in the mindset of the highest good of all and building sustainably, building in a way that will give more than it takes and so that every piece of what it is that we do from the food, energy, housing, education, the stewardship model, the for-profit, non-profit business models, all of those things are done for the highest good of humanity in a way that gives, that continues to produce and creates a global collaborative and a global cooperative of people working together on solutions, long-term, permanent, and positive solution-based thinking that can be implemented anywhere in the world and making it individually beneficial enough and individually attractive enough so that people want to invest in it. Not as a philanthropic or a humanitarian endeavor, although that's a great reason to do it too, but because it really appeals to the individual because it provides so much benefit that people want it for themselves. And in so doing, there's additional benefit by joining the Global Collaborative, by joining the Global Cooperative, and really addressing the very foundations of the very meat, the very essence of where policy decisions are being made, where people are, are coming to look and to make the decisions that they need to make so that we start making the decisions and we start creating the infrastructure, we create the, the permanent and self-replicating foundation to positively and permanently address health, crime, Poverty, all these things simultaneously. Or for the people that really aren't interested in creating complete, self-sufficient, self-sustainable, self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities, just components that can be implemented in people's lives to improve the quality of their food and therefore improve the quality of their health. To, provide, to improve the quality of their education and bring their kids to be able to spend more time with family and, their, and in a home-type environment or to bring more quality education into the traditional environment so that their kids can get better jobs, or to bring a, a highest good for-profit or non-profit business model into their community or into their city or just into their home that helps provide positive things for humanity in a way that not only helps to support their families, but once again is providing to their surrounding communities, to their surrounding cities, to the surrounding country, to the planet as a whole. All of these little pieces being put together so that if a thousand little pieces that seem like they do very little for the world are implemented in a thousand different places around the world and the way to implement them is shared and free shared so that anybody can duplicate it and a thousand people see those thousand ideas and decide to duplicate now that we have two thousand and then we have four thousand and then we have eight thousand and that's just one little idea what if we do that with complete teacher demonstration hubs that teach people not just how to implement one little idea, but how to implement the entire big picture and all the little ideas so that the big model can spread and the little models can spread. Like a virus, a positive virus spreading around the entire world in such a way that empowers people to be able to create more freedom in their lives, create more abundance in their lives, to be able to do it the way that they want to because the whole thing is open source so that people that have different values, different religious beliefs, different political leanings, different financial situations, whatever it is, this transcends all of that. We can rise above that and create something so that all of those ideas can be represented by the people who want to represent them in the way that works for them because the foundation is for the highest good of all. The foundation is on creating a world that works for everybody. And so if people take that and they want to monetize it, or they want to change it, or they want to do it differently, however that works, it's still implementing a foundation that is a big step in the right direction, 
along with a complete package that's being put out there to teach more and more people to do it in such a way that really, really has transformational impact. Sustainable civilization building. This is how we're doing it. So if you'd like to join us, if you'd like to get involved, if you'd like to know the number one way that you can help us right now is to direct people to our funding page. We are looking for huge funding that will set up one community as a permanent positive change engine, a self-replicating change engine. Once we are established, we will become profitable enough to be able to help establish additional communities, villages, sustainable teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities around the world to be able to expand indefinitely, providing more and more open source tools, tutorials, resources, and blueprints indefinitely. That's what our team is about. This is what we enjoy doing most. That's why we're all volunteering our time, because we love it. And so if you want to, if you know somebody, or if you'd like to help us be the change you wish to see in the world, this is what it is that we're doing. Our website details everything everything that we're all about. You can see the amazing amount of work that's gone into it and the open source blueprints that have already been created as we continue to move forward to being shovel ready. And what we need right now is really we're looking for that one investor. It just takes one person that wants to either invest in one community or donate to our nonprofit organization as the year is coming to a close here and allow us to get that property off the market so that we can share the location details and increase our team and produce even more of what it is that we're producing already and then get on that property and build everything that we're talking about. Everything that's detailed on our website as a permanent, collaborative, and cooperative global entity. Bringing more and more people into the fold that want to make a difference in the world and giving them a way to do that. And an environment that anybody can come and visit and experience and actually see what it is all in one place and then take everything that's needed to be able to duplicate that somewhere else so that people can bring the pieces that they want into their own lives or even better yet, take them and evolve them and make them even better. A launch point for a new sustainable civilization that is humanity living in cooperation and collaboration. More and more people getting on board and bringing the resources where they're needed the most. Imagine if we rebuilt the Philippines with sustainable infrastructure. Imagine if we could bring a global collaborative of people to go into that country and to not just bring sustainable infrastructure, but to bring business infrastructure, all the energy infrastructure, food, housing, all this stuff to set it up and then to come into that and rebuild that environment as a complete sustainable civilization that is not only sustainable in helping themselves, but providing to their surrounding communities and then providing something back to the global environment a permanent teacher demonstration community series selection or set of teacher communities, villages, and cities that are teaching more and more people, coming together, bringing people together in collaboration and cooperation, and establishing sustainable businesses that provide something to the global population with a living wage in a way that, that, that works for all the people providing it as well as the rest of the world and teaching others how to do it. We want to create the blueprints to do that. And not just there, in Louisiana, and Haiti, you know, in every place, in places that aren't being stricken by, stricken by natural disasters because it provides a better way of living. So the number one way that people can help us right now is uh, direct people to our funding page, see what it is that we're looking for, and if you know somebody that could possibly provide that, we're the real deal, we're creating it, and so that's what would help the most. The other option is to join our team, to get involved with our project. You know, we've got lots of opportunities, everything from satellite members, which are people that are join our or that want to join our organization and build teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities somewhere else, or to pioneer members, which are the people, the core group of our team that are moving onto the property to build all this stuff, or as consultants and partners and or partners, people that are just consulting, contributing, and donating their time to what it is that we're doing. Every little bit helps, and we are so grateful for everything. That people contribute so or just share our stuff on Facebook that is also and on Twitter and and uh, Google Plus and all these different things sharing our information on the different social media uh, networks is also really really helpful help us get the information out you never know who you know and we just need our project to land in the hands of the right person and we'll take everything that we're doing which is an amazing amount of work but we will multiply it a hundred times and then we will multiply it a thousand times 
and then we will multiply it 10,000 times. Becoming the number one provider of open source and free shared information in the world and redefining the industry of sustainability as an open source platform of constant evolution and growth for the highest good of all. And the industry of sustainability to expand and include education, for-profit, non-profit business models, true stewardship, these things which really, if they are missing, food, energy, and housing isn't sustainable if you don't have happy people. Food, energy, and housing isn't sustainable if you don't have educated people. Food, energy, and housing isn't sustainable if you don't have an economic model that allows that to grow and thrive and expand in a way that supports the planet, supports the growing population as well in a way that's going to last and be sustainable for the entire world. This is what it is that we're providing. So, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for the amazing, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for the amazing emails that we get, thank you for the messages that we get on our videos like this one, thank you for all of the great feedback that we get, thank you for people that read our website and say, hey, we found a spelling error, or hey, did you think about this? Everything that we get, every email, every message that we get gets integrated in some way. Nothing gets ignored. So, thank you for everyone that's a part of what it is that we're creating. Thank you for everybody that's contributing in the way that works best for you. And for those that want to get involved more, we have options for participation that are tailored for every possible need. And so, I just, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we will continue to uh, progress. And uh, to everyone, depending on when you were listening to this, have a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, keep on keeping on. And uh, thanks for following our project. Until next week.